Miko? Yeah. Can I go with him? <laughs> no, he'll go with Brennan. He'll be quiet. Hello, everybody. We should be live. We are here with the oh, wonderful, amazing Catherine Cows to celebrate oh, KU. Yay! Yes, oh, all the binging. Thanks. Yeah. Super, super exciting. So we are here to chat all about her books. So if you have questions, yes. hit us with it. <laughs> and let you know where to start. Oh, you know what I didn't grab? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> Book number one. Oh, better go get it. I know. I, I read her, your entire backlist except for your very first book. Which we don't need to talk about. Which is a spider <laughs> romance? I did not know this. It? <laughs> but it's my first book, you guys. Everyone, every time someone tells me they're starting from the beginning, I'm like, but I've grown so much as a writer. Pick something later. <laughs> <laughs> But it is fun. I was telling Jess, like, it's a little more of, like, a messy romance, you know? <laughs> love messy. Love that. Which we love. So. And MMA, which is, like, Tori's bread and butter, so. I do love MMA. That was, like, the, that's, like, the one sport I know a little bit about. I don't know anything about other sports except for MMA. I love it. I'm so ready. I'm going to read it at some point. Uh-oh. Just brace much. yourself. No, um, it's, it's always fun to go back and see. You see how much a writer has, like, grown. There you go. I um, like it when you look at it that way. I think yeah. it's – because it's, like, every book I learn a little more, so. Of course, yeah. Lorna's mm -hmm. <laughs> going to go back to the uh -oh. beginning. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, but your first complete series is Set Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's the series where I found a little more of my voice, you know, like a little more of my style, all of that kind of stuff. I think I have two books in that series, the last two books left in that series, okay. and two books in the Rex series. That's it. Ooh. And then the first book. Okay. The set. So, wait, you said you have two left in Wrecked? Yep. Mm -hmm. The book fourth board. book in that series is my favorite. It's Jess's favorite. Too. I know. I have it on my shelf, and I'm like, I haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> If you like serial killers with your romance. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, I say it's like real, real romantic suspense with like serial killers. It's not just like a random stalker or like. Yeah, a jealous it's not ex. just like, like a romantic suspense. Light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the romance too is amazing. So. Aw, thank you. Right. Yay. I'm so happy to. This has been kind of like a long time coming and. Um, it's just fun to be able to meet a whole bunch of new readers that I feel like maybe weren't able to give me a try before, or just, you know, I was surprised how many people said, you know, like, I've picked you up recently and love your books, but it's hard for me to go back and like read from the beginning. Like all of that just feels so fun. So. Yeah. I think, um, when, what was that book bonanza last year? Oh yeah. It was that book bonanza. I picked up, you had like the free codes for the first book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I actually went and bought all of them or the audios for them after that. And it and like as they were coming out and stuff. Yeah. Because I only read really on KU. The only time I buy books is if I buy audiobooks. Yeah. So I think like so many people are gonna appreciate and then you'll like you said, have like this whole other reader group that's gonna find your books and be like, Oh, this is amazing. I love this. Just so much more like accessibility for some readers. Yeah, I love that. It's like it's really fun too when you get to see like people, you know, recommending to their friends and all of that kind of stuff. And like, it's so much easier for people to try because it's, it's hard. It's a big commitment, you know? So mm -hmm. this is, this is super fun for me. Yeah. And hopefully uh, more people pick up the audios because of KU Read and Listen now, right? Or yeah, Whisper Sync Whisper. where they can buy it and then get the audios for a little cheaper. So. Which is my favorite way to read. I like switching back and forth. <laughs> For people who are brand new to you, we can start here. Where do you recommend they start? So I recommend two places. I say either Whispers of You, which is the first book in the series that I'm currently writing in, or Tattered Stars, which is the first book in my most recent complete series. I feel like those are great jumping off points are going to get a really good feel for, you know, what I write, the kind of stories I'm excited to tell. And I just think it's a good, a good place to, to jump in kind of all my series, like, 
you get little like nuggets from different series. Like occasionally someone will pop up from an earlier series. And so it's kind of fun to kind of see how those inter interweave and stuff. And does it Holt show up in the Tattered and Torn series? Okay. Yes. yes. In book three, right? Is it book three? He's in book really? three and in book five. So he is just like, I think a phone call in book three. He's good mm -hmm. friends with Beckett. And then he actually shows up to help like do security at Ramsey's ranch in the last book. So we get a little, a little taste of him, which is super fun. I like, I like peppering things in, in series. And if you are reading Lost and Found, I think it's starting book three, you're, you start to get like, so just be on the lookout because I think it's book three, four and five you get a little sneak peek of maybe a future hero for another series. Mm. I, re I remember reading Holt or like meeting him in book three and I was mm -hmm. maybe like, who is this? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I need to know his story. Where does he come in? Does he get it later book? Like is he going to show up later? And then we see him book five and I was like, oh, she set it up for like the next year. Oh like, yeah, gotta, gotta pepper it in. Sorry guys, my dog is like all over the place. <laughs> this is he would like to, to <laughs> greet his public. <laughs> we adore puppies here, so I'm glad. Ah, that makes me so huge. Oh, I didn't know it was Fashion York. I don't remember how I read that one. Yeah, he's got a great voice. Some good narrators. Oh, thank you so much, Morgan. That is like one of my favorite moments in books. <laughs> So it was really fun to finally be able to write that. The problem is now I want to like write it in every book. <laughs> I didn't know I you hadn't done that, that yet. Mm -mm. I think I've had those vibes, but I don't think I've ever like had those exact words, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, because I think every heroine gets hurt at some point. So yeah. how is the hero not I screaming know. yet? <laughs> I know. Oh, thank you so much. Reads are perfect. Oh, I do like this next question because Catherine's a huge audiobook reader, which I think is why your audiobooks are so good. Um, mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you choose your narrators? So I listen to a lot of audio myself, and now I've had a ton of luck, like just working with some incredible, incredible talent in the audio business. And now I've really started to get to know their voices pretty well. So as I'm writing, I start thinking about who I may want to play certain characters. Um, and that, and even when I'm plotting, I'm thinking about it because it's, you do have to book pretty far ahead. And so I'll kind of think, what kind of vibe is this hero? Is this heroine? You know, also like what their age is, what their background, all of that kind of stuff. But I'm also always like looking for new narrators that maybe I haven't worked with before. I listened to an audiobook recently and was really like blown away by the male narrator who I won't say yet because I don't know if we'll, I asked if I could work with him, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not yet. But I was, I've always heard him do kind of like lighter stuff. And he was really more emotional in this book. And I was really blown away by his performance. And before I had always really liked his voice, but wasn't sure it would be like the right fit. And I was like, I was so wrong. I would love to work with him. So um, it's kind of fun to, you know, have the opportunity to try new people too. Yeah. I was just looking at who did Echoes. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I have to check. I know. Like Jason Clark. Jason Clark and Aaron Allen. Yes. Yeah who are phenomenal. They're both such great talents. And Jason has such that good, deep rasp. Like, it's just... There was two quotes. When I got the paperback, I immediately, like, took the highlighter and I highlighted the... Who did this? And then I think I went to the... It was the end of chapter 26 because I remember listening because I'll remember, <laughs> like, the chapters. And I'll go and highlight because I'm like, I need to... I love it. <laughs> that is... There were so many highlights and echoes. Yes. Yes. That makes me so happy. Yes. Fun. Ooh. So I, I like some historical romance. I'm like not like a huge fangirl, mostly Highlander stuff. 
I absolutely am obsessed with the Maya Banks books. Those like Never Seduce a Scott is probably one of my top 10 books ever. I reread it probably every year. I love it so freaking much. So I do like some historical, but I definitely wouldn't say I'm like a connoisseur of the genre or anything, but here and there, I do pick it up. <laughs> but you are a big rereader, so. Yes. Sure it's like once I love something, it's like I have to be careful because I don't want to ruin the book by rereading it too much, but I want to revisit it. It's like going back and seeing best friends, you know? Yep. Just like with Nora. Yep. Um. I'm I'm intrigued by this question. Would you write secret baby or surprise baby? I will be honest. I have never come up with like an idea that felt like it fit, you know, like where it was justified, but then it also like fit the feel of like my books and stuff. So I think, yes, if I came up with the right idea, like I wanted to write marriage of convenience for a long time before I wrote beautifully broken redemption. Um, and I'm dying to write it again. I actually have an idea for a book that I want to, I want to try it again. And, but, um, I'm always like, I never want to force a trope unless it feels like it fits the story, if that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. So I have a question. You write a lot of series. It seems like, like mm -hmm. you went from tired, like Tattered and Torn right into Lost and Found. Do you plan on writing any like standalones in between those series or releasing them? I have an idea for a standalone and I have an idea for a duet that I would love to write either of them at some point. It just kind of depends what my schedule looks like. It's hard to kind of fit things in once you get going in a series because like I said, like I'm booking audio, I'm booking editors, those kinds of things. So yes, I would like to, but I just don't know. I don't know when. And I, whenever I write secondary characters, my problem is also that then I want to give them books. And it's like, I'm just bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> Off of that, I do have two things. First, you have to work so far ahead because you do simultaneous release, which is, as a reader, absolutely amazing. That means the audio, <laughs> ebook, and paperback all come out at the same time, which yep. takes a lot of time. It does. A lot. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So I'm always juggling a bunch. I am always writing and editing at the same time. So I will typically write first in my day because that's like the hardest thing. And then I'll usually take row for a walk, like let my brain kind of shift over and then switch to editing in the afternoon. Um, and that just kind of allows me to take more time at each stage of the project. It gives me more time to write, more time to edit. I can kind of let the project breathe a little more, but it does mean that I'm usually first drafting anywhere from seven, seven months to a year before the book comes out. <laughs> so it's a lot earlier. So like I've written the first draft of all the books in the Lost and Found series, but they're just at different phases of editing, proofing, audio formatting because all of that just takes a really long time and I prefer not to be rushed because that really stresses me out like I would rather just have plenty of time and not you know because then people will inevitably ask well why don't you just put them all out now it's like because then I will have no books left and I'll feel very stressed out <laughs> yeah but works for you and it works for us. So we can wait. I mean, and you release what every three months. So that is very fast. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta. Yeah. <laughs> Zachary Weber is the narrator for Whispers of You and it is amazing. I love him so much. He's so good. So talented. I, uh, but you, oh, go ahead. I just heard a little snippet of him from a future book and it's real good. Just saying. Are all three audios already done? At different <laughs> stages. Okay. <laughs> Obviously very exciting. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. 
Um, but, and I don't want to forget, you mentioned this one. This one is so oh good. God. I feel like not enough people read it. It is Beautifully Broken Redemption, the I cover. It's stunning. Is and that four? It's five. Five. Oh, yeah. Right? Last one. I went back and added a fifth book to that series after I finished the Wrecked series. I had this idea and I wanted to kind of revisit the world. And it was super fun to do that. So, yeah. That was cool. I didn't, I didn't know that came out way after. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, would you ever write a redemption arc? I don't think Ooh, that's a great question. Oh. Um, I think it depends. It really does depend on who we're redeeming here. I feel pretty strongly about like not redeeming people who have done real irrevocable harm to other characters. Um, just cause I, that's, that's just not my style. Not that I don't think people should be forgiven in, in real life, but, um, I think that would be tough for me to write, but I would love to write like an anti-hero. Like I would, I would love to do something like that. I would love if you wrote an anti-hero. <laughs> <laughs> would be real fun. I feel like you could have, there might be the right opportunity for it. I just, Maybe that should be a standalone. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that would be exciting. I feel like, is it, which one was it? I always. Oh, shoot. Did you Uh-oh. freeze? I thought I froze, so I'm glad. <laughs> You're like, oh, no. Oh, she's back. Nope. No. Am I back? You're back now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, is it, was it Roan that in the past they like, accused of yeah so I guess technically yeah. like well I guess not really redemption arc because he didn't actually he do was it. found innocent already so it's not like he did something wrong but I do love playing around with like how other people perceive a character especially someone who might be a little more reclusive like we kind of saw that with Ramsey in Fractured Sky this really tortured hero who people you know believe all of this kind of like bad stuff about and Roan is is a little bit similar and just but in a very different way because he's had to stay living in this town where people always kind of wondered if he did something really horrible you know until kind of recently so we get in his book we really get to see kind of some of the ramifications of that. And I really like exploring that kind of stuff. Which also might be why people love Ramsey's book the most. Here we go. And why everyone's always asking about Rowan. <laughs> the more damage, the better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I do love how you set up your next books because you always give enough of a tease that you're like, oh my gosh, but I need their book now. And I mean, that's why they're probably like, you have it written, just release it already. <laughs> but, uh, we, you know, the next one is gray. Yeah, the next one is gray. Um, and the person who really kind of like helped me with that is Susan Stoker. I met her early on in my career and she had read Beautifully Broken Pieces and she loved it. She was so kind to me and I met her at a conference and she like took me aside and she's like, okay. I love your books. She's like, you really got to tease the next couple that's coming. (laughs) And so I always think about her, like when I'm working on a book, I'm like, okay, did I do Susan proud? (laughs) That's cute. But it's the sister, right? What's her name? Oh my gosh. What's her name? Gray. Gray. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But she has, she has diabetes, right? She does. I have an amazing blogger friend who actually lives pretty close to me here um, in the Central Oregon area. Her name is Elle. She is absolutely incredible. She has type one and I've just always been super inspired by her badassery. Like she is just incredible. She climbs mountains. She is like just such an inspiration. And so I had reached out to her when I was thinking about plotting this series and asked if she would feel comfortable with me writing a character that had type one and would she be willing to kind of walk with me through the whole process. So we um, got together and well, I guess it was like still COVID times at that. So we did a zoom first and then she has beta read each book 
from the series and really, really helped with Gray's character. Um, and it has just been so amazing to write. And even in the first two books, I've gotten so many messages from people who have type one or people who have kids that have type one. And I just love being able to give that like tiny piece of representation. I think it's, um, feels really special and I feel honored that she was willing to kind of really open up and, and help me hopefully do gray justice. I am so excited for her character. Cause you like, you have all the brothers that are like so protective, like you can't mm -hmm. do this, you can't do that. And I'm just like waiting for her to like just wait. explode <laughs> and be like, yes, I can. Yes, I know. I'm waiting oh. for that moment. That's what I'm about. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Was the experience writing Grey's Diabetes different than your experience doing Shattered Sea where it was your own personal experience? Yes, it was very different. I will be honest, I have been a little hesitant to dive into a space that isn't my own because it does feel like a lot of pressure to do it justice. And I inevitably have to ask the question if I'm the best person to tell that story. Um, so it is challenging, but I think because Elle and I have a genuine friendship and I've gotten to see her live that experience to a certain degree and then having her read all of the books, that is probably the only way I would really feel comfortable is like if I had someone really closely walking with me through the whole experience, because the last thing I want to do is harm instead of making people feel seen or help. And I'm never going to get everything right 100% of the time because every exper lived experience is very different. You know, her experience as someone who has type one is going to be different from someone else's. But I feel like if, if she says I am doing her justice in a story, then like that's, that's good in my book. I agree. We're very excited. <laughs> and if you guys did not know, where is it? Shattered Sea does have chronic pain rep, which Catherine also has. So it is own experience for Shattered yeah, Sea. Which was which super, is super special to write. And like, I think that and Beautifully Broken Pieces are the books that I get the most messages about that like make me start to cry. <laughs> um, because Beautifully Broken Pieces is like deals a lot with grief. Um, which is definitely from like own experiences for me from losing my dad, who I was super close with. And so I put big chunks of myself into those. Those are probably my two most personal books. Um, and so those messages just always feel really extra special. Um, I don't know. Have you announced the, or it's all the siblings. Yes. So here <laughs> is... Or next is Gray and Caden, which was like the most fun to write. It was like super fiery, very bantery. They like, <laughs> I'm like, she might try and murder him before they get together, but it's a fun journey. <laughs> and then we have Roan. And I will tell you guys that his heroine is Aspen, who is the single mom to Katie that we met in Echoes of You. She works at the cafe. <laughs> Like no, Sam just asked me about this. Like, I don't know, three hours ago, I was talking to her and she was like, I wonder if she's going to do this single mom from the cafe. And I was like, you know what? I could probably ask her tonight because like, I'll be on the live. So that, that was why my face, I was like, oh my yes, God. So I love it. It's like all the grumpy sunshine vibes. Like, oh, it's so, so fun. And then the last book is Lawson and I will not reveal his heroine quite yet. So we will have to wait and see. <laughs> Do you purposefully pick the most exciting people for the end? Yes. <laughs> You kill us. Like, I think it's usually the people that like I've been thinking about the longest, you know, that go towards the end for whatever reason, like because I know where I'm going so I can kind of like build up to it because I like thinking about the series arc too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, 
So that's a part of it. And it's just fun to get to tease. If you know people are going to be excited about them, it's really fun to get to tease along the way as to what's going to happen. But I'll be honest, I thought I was not expecting Rome. Like I was not expecting people like from book one to be like, he like grunted twice and people were like, when are we getting his book? <laughs> I was like, he didn't even talk in book one. <laughs> that's what uh what's his name for fractures guy like we love it's Ramsey. very true ramsey yep. um, yes, Ramsey. Oh my which God. i will say that was very cruel waiting for their book for the tower and torn series because you see her from book one you're like oh my gosh but i, I need her to have an hea yeah, be like, book five it had to be full circle that's true it made sense for the plot but i loved it it's so cool. uh, thank you so glimmers of you comes out you said august right august 1st and then it's october right october 24th and then the beginning of february for book five um so it's not not too long until they'll all be out crazy. so going back to what you said that you usually start writing a year in advance so you already have written some of your next series right not yet. I okay. haven't, I haven't written yet. So I've just been in the editing phase and I'm working on a little side project right now too, that if anything comes of it, obviously I will share, but it's in very, very early stages. So I took some time. I will actually be losing a little bit of how far ahead I am to work on kind of this other, other little project. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have the next series? Kind of, I mean, you said we might we might see them after book three, right? Yes. Yeah. Do you yeah, have yeah. it like planned out? I do. I have the concept. I have like rough sketches of the characters. Like some books are like very fully formed in my mind and then others are not. And inevitably this is the time when I start to panic because I'm like, do I know enough? And it's that <laughs> weird time like before I've started writing, but while I'm still plotting, because inevitably when I start writing, I get to know all of the characters um, more, especially if it's like a family or a group of friends, you know, I'm writing them as secondary characters. So more things kind of reveal themselves to me. So it's a little bit of a tricky place, but I know overarching kind of like themes, concept, I know book one pretty well. I'm getting ready to like plot that in detail. I'll start it when I get back from book bonanza. And then, yeah, we'll just kind of, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it all comes together. <laughs> so excited. All the books, so excited, but it's another series. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it five still? I think this one might be six actually. Oh, mm -hmm. my I got I kept getting more ideas so <laughs> just now like, oh, this is be one more there were two things I really wanted to tell and I couldn't I couldn't choose between them so just to go there we go I um so Catherine will be a book bonanza I will be a book bonanza and Tori will be a book bonanza so I know. Yay. it's gonna be yeah. so fun I can't wait to see you Jessica this is gonna be a blast I think it's going to be hectic, but it's going to be amazing. There are so many huge authors there. I'm going to be like, just like looking around like, folks. <laughs> it's real. There's a lot of people there. I know. <laughs> way more than me, but yes. Yeah. Everyone's going to have fun. Um, where do you get, sorry, back to this one. Where do you get your character names? That's a good question. I have a, like a note in my notes app in my phone and anytime I hear or like see cool names, I just write it down in there in alphabetical order. And then I like put little emojis next to the ones that I've used because my memory is horrible. Like my copy editor is constantly like, you can't name this character this because you've already used this name. Please change it. <laughs> So bad and embarrassing. Um, so I have a notes app. I get them everywhere. Like um, sometimes it's like TV shows. My mom will actually, whenever she hears a cool name, like either for a town or a person, she will text it to me. She's the one that heard Wolf Gap somewhere, actually. That was her um, th doing. Um, she also came up with the name Jensen, who is in Sutter Lake. Um, so she's she's come through clutch a few times. <laughs> I 
love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Read oh, echo. Thank you so much. Those are good picks. I like those picks. Jess, do you just have all of her books sitting next to you? I do. So I was trying to look for it. Is <laughs> I have like all of them and the special covers. I just took them all off. So. Oh my gosh. Oh, speaking of, where was that? Um, who does your covers? Because they're so pretty. So all of my I'm looking to make sure that that's true. Yes. Yeah, so all of my people covers are Hong Lee, who is incredible. She also did the special editions for uh, Lost and Found, the ones that are compasses. Um, and then Kat from TRC Designs did the Tattered and Torn special editions, and she's phenomenal. Um, so I just have had like so like there's just been so many amazing designers that I've had the privilege of working with. And then Emily Wittig did um, my two signing special editions that I'm going to have. Ooh, good okay. job. That I'll be at Book Bonanza. <laughs> Vanna White, thank you very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> very funny. Um, so it's just fun. Like, I really love working on covers, but it's also really, really hard. My designer Hong is incredible and she really is a saint for putting up with me. We go back and forth a ton on the first book in the series. We have been working on the next series for, I think four months now, and we're still not totally locked into the covers. <laughs> so you do the covers before you've even written them? Yes, because I need to know what the people look like. I got myself into some trouble on my first series trying to find photos that matched what I was writing. It's much easier to, if I roughly know what the story is going to be so I can get the vibe of the characters, I will try and find the photos and then at least have the photos picked. But knowing how long it takes us to kind of zero in on a concept it, it's just helpful to start early, basically. I really like to have the concept locked in before um, I start writing. It's fine if the other covers take a little bit longer as long as I know what photo I'm using, but it is, it is challenging. But I did get some concepts last night that I'm like so stoked on. So I think we're like 95% of the way there. So I'm super, super excited. Just got to pick a few more things that we will see all the exciting plans and I yeah. like because you have such a brand that is <laughs> yeah. pretty water and I but I love it because it's you know it's you and it's yeah. still like a small town so yeah. yeah I love I think I'm just I'll always be like the couple or people cover girl I don't know I just there's something about those type of covers that I mean obviously I can appreciate the other covers the alternate mm -hmm. covers is like for artistic design but the people covers I don't know there's just something yeah. about it that always gets me I really love both like it is it's hard to there there are things that are hard about both like it's really hard for me to find photos to be to be totally honest because a lot of them are super smiley, you know? And so it's hard to find those photos that really like, my books are not super smiley. <laughs> smiley at the end, but not on the way there. So it's like, it, I really am looking for that emotion in, in the photo and that is not always easy. Have you ever thought of like trying to work with a photographer? I think Elsie has said this about her Chestnut Spring series that she like works with a photographer. We have actually worked with the same one and she is pretty incredible. I have a few photos from her now. Oh, okay. um, she actually just did a shoot for me and a couple of other friends. And so you can, but finding the couple itself is really hard because it's best if you work with a couple who's really a couple because there is, you know, like an intimacy there and you get really raw, authentic photos. Um, and so it can just be challenging to find the right pairing, you know, and people that are willing to be on a book cover, to be honest, you know? Yeah. That totally makes sense. 
<laughs> this is such a great question. She has read one of my books. It took her a real long time. <laughs> she is a huge reader, but she is not a romance reader. So <laughs> she's like, she does not want to read the sexy times like at all. <laughs> but she does. She loves the mystery part. So she read Tattered Stars and she was like, I really like it. And I don't know. She asked if she could take um, Fractured Sky, but because she was curious about Shiloh, you know, after reading Tattered Stars. And I was like, sure, but I don't think she's read it. <laughs> <laughs> Very supportive, just not a reader of my books, which maybe is for the best. Let's be honest. <laughs> Um, would you ever do older woman, younger man? You never know. It's not a trope that I've read a lot of. Um, and I don't know if that's just because like, I've always dated guys that were older than me <laughs> as opposed to younger than me, but maybe, maybe I'll be entering that era. Who knows? <laughs> Could happen. <laughs> that and it could be a surprise pregnancy and then. There you go. Just all all one. One. <laughs> I love it. Yay. Well, I made a face for a secret and surprise David, and I thought, well, I mean, like, I'm not the biggest fan of romantic suspense, but I like in your books, so, like, maybe if you do it, I'll start to, like, like this secret and surprise David. There we go. Me. You never know. <laughs> I do like the secret baby. I really like that trope. And I think yeah. I don't mind that one as much as surprise baby. Yeah. 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 Um, if anybody, so if anybody has any questions about her backlist, like if there's tropes you want, let us know in the comments and we can give you Rex. Yeah, that's that's um, good. Or just give oh, what you is your, you haven't written yet. What is your Go favorite ahead. from each series so far? Well, like all, out of your completed yeah. series. Um, okay. Sutter Lake. I think it's really hard for it not to be beautifully broken pieces for me, not even necessarily for the book, but just because it was like so personal to me, like I, and that's the book where I feel like I found more of my voice. So that is like, that just is it for that series for me. You know, like there are other books where like, I like the tropes or the moments more maybe, but like that one just has a special place in my heart. And then Wrecked is Reckless Refuge, which was just I had this idea for this prologue and I just, yeah, I just, I loved it so much. And I loved the concept. It is like a little darker, not darker within the relationship, but the outside forces are a little darker for sure. Um, so it might be, it might be too dark for some people. The, the runner up to that one is, is uh, wrecked palace in that series, which is like grumpy sunshine, single guardian, which I love. <laughs> And then Tattered and Torn, it has to be Fractured Sky. Like, it just has to be. I just love them. Even though there are, like, Shattered Sea will always have such a special place in my heart. But that book was also really hard to write. So, like, a Fractured Sky just felt like it poured out of me because I'd been living with the two of them in my head for so long. I was, like, so ready to write them that it just was, like, so easy. and just wonderful yeah. I mean, but we all know hidden waters is the best in that series. <laughs> you're like that's my favorite <laughs> i would say i would say shattered is my favorite obviously yes yeah. Yeah. yeah yay i love that it's just because you guys are amazing the series as if we all have different favorites so yeah uh, but i do know a lot of people love hidden waters like overall that's like one of their favorites it's I funny I feel early. like I have seen like when the series was like live releasing like it very much felt like Fractured Sky was the favorite but then I would say like over the last few months I see a lot more for Hidden Waters like it's interesting so it's kind of funny like how perception changes that was my favorite and then I read Shattered Sea and I was like oh no, that's <laughs> You're like, oh, no, no. and then I read Fractured Sky and I was like oh no that one takes it. <laughs> That one's like up there. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we want. <laughs> but that's how it's going for me with um the Lost and Bound series. Is like yeah. I read Whispers of You and I was like, okay, I love this. And then I just yeah. read Echoes of You and I was like, no, no, because this one's my favorite. <laughs> but I really just didn't feel that when I was writing it. Like I this one has really built for me with like each book, which has mm -hmm. felt really, really fun. Yeah. So it's gonna be. A wild time. I can't wait. 
is the most angst? I think reckless m memories or, awesome. yeah, or further to fall, honestly. <laughs> oh, this really? one is dead sister's boyfriend. I have to like remember, but like there's like a full, there's some drama in that book. Like, yeah. It was it's like very like it's a little angsty soapy do you know what I mean like that's yeah like, that makes sense <laughs> but you know adult you aren't too angsty so when I read that I, one, I was like oh that's I like the there. drama to come from outside forces <laughs> that's, that's why we have the stalkers everyone's talking about reckless refuge and now I'm like okay I think that just might be my audio for this weekend like when I, I love it I think that's something. a great that's a great I've been putting it off because everyone's been telling me oh I think you're gonna love it oh it's my favorite I love this one I love it about that I love it I'm like okay I'll just do it you have to message me because I might have I probably have audio codes honestly so okay <laughs> I'll message you after okay <laughs> <laughs> we did chat about this a little bit already um with shattered sea and glimmers yeah so would no would you want to write a disability with suspense? yeah so i mean gray obviously um will get some representation with that and her struggles um i don't know um i haven't planned out all of the next series so i'm just honestly not sure it just kind of depends like like I've said before, like I really want to make sure that there is someone who I am close with in my life for whatever I'm going to write about so that we have, you know, a level of relationship that we can have really honest conversations, especially when those conversations are about sensitive topics. So I think I just always want to be really respectful of anyone who I'm asking to give me that kind of time, that kind of energy. Like that's a big ask of people. And so I just want to be really like mindful of that. And it also depends on like it, I want it to serve the story. You know, I want it to be a part of the story. Like Gray's type one is a part of her journey. You know, that is an integral part to her story. And so I want, it has to be the right fit, I guess is what I would say. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Like, do you, I know for Shattered um, C, it was more because like personal, you're like, I could just dive deep. But even yeah. that, I can only imagine like how exhausting that is of having yeah. to think constantly about all the pain that you've gone through and all the stuff yeah. that comes on top of it. Like, I don't mind when people ask me questions, but like we do live shows for um, like chronic illness and stuff like yeah. that. It's, it's, it's like taxing. Like I have to go take a nap after talking about yeah. that. So, you're diving deep. You're really diving into it, but um, and it's really emotional and it takes a lot out of you. And there are going to be days where you're going to be able to handle that. And there are days when you're not. Yeah. And you have to feel comfortable enough with the person to say, hey, look, I can't do this today. You know, I don't. I'm. Yeah. I, I need to come at it a different day. You yeah. know. Yeah. That totally makes sense. I would love for you to write a love triangle. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't know that that's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to be really honest. I don't know. At least not in this genre. Maybe if I wrote another genre, it will happen. But like something paranormally. But maybe not. Maybe not in contemporary. <laughs> not a small town love triangle. It's Candy so Steiner fun. does this though. She has a love triangle. And then the third book in the series is about the person that didn't get picked. Wait, so. who does? Candy Maybe. Steiner. Oh, yeah. Which it's the... Is it he? Something? What he doesn't know he and doesn't what know. it was like something with no in the title. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, but that's I like super. Just, yeah, I just read the duet and I was like, I can't read the third book. I was like, I am so done. I can't read it. I can't do this. <laughs> she made it hurt. Yes, yes. <laughs> which is always the best. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Kelly. Hello, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. I adore you, just FYI. <laughs> um, single parent books. Okay, I have um, Beautifully Broken Spirit, which is single mom. Beautifully Broken uh, Redemption, which is single guardian. Um, I have um, Wrecked Palace, which is single guardian. Um, I don't think there are any other single 
Um, series. Oh, I was thinking in Wrecked. I was like, I don't think there's anything else in Wrecked. A lot more Guardian, I think. Than single yeah, it was just the Guardian. And then Single Dad is Falling Embers. And then we're going to have a single mom and a single dad in Lost and Found. So all the single parents now. <laughs> all the good things. <laughs> I really want to read a single morally gray dad. Ooh, interesting. I'll have to think about that. You know how I could see that happening is um, like if they were morally gray to protect their kid. Like, cause I feel like that is something I could totally get behind. Um, if you like that trope, you should also read Give Me a Reason by A.L. Jackson. Phenom, so good. I need you because she has good romantic suspense, right? I haven't read that series. Yes, she's got. She has. She writes twists so well. Like I'm always like, dang, and like she always makes the twist hurt. Like you were like, oh. I think I have that book downloaded for my TBR this month. Ooh, yeah, good. Tori, that's the series I told you I would have read already. <laughs> yeah, you did it. I know. Yeah, I know. Get on it. Stop, stop. <laughs> We we're going to do a read along. And I was like, no, I'm going to read that this month. It's fine. Like, let's not do it. And then it's been two months and I haven't gotten to it yet. Looks like you do need a read along. <laughs> we do. That's why we um, do the read along. So she gets through series. Because <laughs> I don't she finish. She does them. have a real hard time finishing them. <laughs> <I do. laughs> okay. um, but I was just, speaking of twists though, like there was a twist in here that I literally like, <gasps> I was like, no way. I did not see that coming. It. So it does get like harder and harder because. I don't want things that are predictable, but I also never want to have like work overly hard to have a twist that doesn't fit the story. Like I would rather, you know, who the bad guy is. You just don't know like how it's going to happen or maybe something at the end is like an extra little surprise at the end. And it's like, sometimes I want things to be a little more predictable. And sometimes I want them. You really, really like, don't know. There's yeah, one I thing. I was going to say, I never see your twist coming. I never see oh, them. Oh, good. Coming. I love that. <laughs> no. That's so fun. <laughs> I was going to say there's one in this series that I'm especially proud of. And when everything is done, I will tell you which one. We'll see if you guys agree. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming that I haven't come yet. We'll see. <laughs> a sports for me to sport? Probably not a series, but I do have an idea for an ex-athlete in my next series that I've had for a little bit. I've got a few different ideas that have kind of been percolating and yeah, so athlete-ish, but probably not a whole series. I don't know enough about sports, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it. Kelly. I love you too. You're the best. Hello, Christy. Hi, Christy. Hi, Christy. Yes, that's a good one. I love that one. Yes. Oh, numbers. Yep. Falling oh, numbers. Furry oh, friends. Oh, yeah, this is my next question. I will tell you guys, there um, are furry friends in two out of three of the next three books. And uh, Roan's book has the most furry friends of any book that I've ever written. And it was real fun. <laughs> Like more yeah. than like Ramsey with like the horses and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which I did love the horses. I, I'm I'm not around horses a lot, but I love the horses in in. I Sky. love. I have been a horseback rider in my earlier life, and I just love horses so much. So it's hard for like I have to restrain myself to not put like a significant <laughs> horse like storyline in every series because I probably would if I could. <laughs> I tried to like every other. So there isn't one in Lost and Found. So then maybe I can do it again in the next series. I think my favorite like furry friend that you've written is in Shattered Sea with her puppy. And he has the wheelchair, like the doggy wheelchair. That's based on a real dog. This dog that I met at my vet when I lived in Los Angeles. He was the cutest thing ever. He was so sweet and like so much spunk and like like a little chihuahua fluffy like and he would just like hop along the vet's Aww. office like in his little wheels. <laughs> we love all the dogs here. So yes. the more the merrier. <laughs> 
a large age well, gap. Well, first I have to ask what what qualifies as a large <laughs> age gap. 30 years is the long like the largest age gap I've read. I don't years. think I don't think we <laughs> can go that far. <laughs> Can you get a gap? Quite fair. I do have an age gap. Um, uh, Lawson's book is an age gap, but it's not quite that much of an age gap. So, what's the biggest you've written so far? Like before, let's out. That's a great question, but I'm not sure that I know the answer to that. It's, um, <laughs> I think, like 10 years, I think. Um, Shiloh and Ramsey were an age gap, so was Reckless Refuge. Um, but I don't think I'm not big on like giving the exact ages because then I feel like the math thing can get a little a little tricky sometimes. Um, it's more I will tell you it's much more specific in Lawson's book, and the gap is 13 years. That's a pretty big age gap. Most people consider like age gap over like eight or nine years. Like yeah. that's when it like really is like part of the story. So that's large for me. <laughs> I don't know if that counts. <laughs> I cannot find the comment is way back. Someone asked if you're doing like wide before release, but you are not. No, I'm not. Video. I'm just going directly into KU. And I know there are authors who do that. But I will be totally honest, I think over time it confuses readers. It's a little bit stressful on the author end because sometimes books get stuck and then you've done all this release planning and you can't do it the way that you intended because a book hasn't come down. It, it just is very tricky. I wish, I truly, truly wish there was a way that I could keep everyone happy, but it's just not possible. And I feel like it's better that I just take them down now not do a wide pre-order knowing that eventually I would have to stop doing that anyway. So I'm like, I feel like let's have the pain point now and then hopefully we'll just have the happy after. So that's the goal. Ooh, rugged mountain men. I love this idea. This is like percolating some things in my head. So yes, I would love to do that. That feels reclusive, which is my <laughs> bread and butter, apparently. <laughs> so they, yes, they were like, Ramsey's close. In like a cave somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Ramsey is very close. I think if you put him yeah. like farther in a mountain and like a bigger beard. There you go. It's true. Perfect. Ron doesn't have a beard, but like he's got some scruff. And he's like, he does live in like a tiny cabin, like far up, like kind of on the mountain. So kind of a rugged mountain, man. You're just teasing us for everything to come instead of telling us what to, <laughs> to read. That's so mean. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's too funny. Oh shoot, did we freeze her? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm oh, here you go. There you are. It was <laughs> hello. Do I love um, this? Question? I'm reading my it. new favorite book of all time. I'm pretty sure, which is fourth wing so just everyone be prepared for the next you guys really came prepared mine's on my dining room table um but I love this book so much you guys I can't even tell you I was telling Jess and Tori before we got started like it gets harder as you write to like really distance yourself and like really immerse yourself into the reading and this is the first book I have felt that way truly about and in a long time and I love it so much and everyone needs to read it <laughs> yeah I agree that was so good just I I'm not allowed to see you this weekend until you finish that book okay <laughs> he's got that's a few hundred pages, pages to go <laughs> I, I'm only on page 100 but you that's can listen like to the audio in the in the car you should just get the audio I don't use one of your credits for once in your life <laughs> I was going to say that or I'll send you the audio. Like, I was like, I am going to gift her this freaking audio. <laughs> no. It's just a different experience, like physically reading it versus listening to it. That That is true. But, I but do who's, who's the female narrator? I can't remember her name. It wasn't someone that I have listened to before, but I really like her voice. I did switch to the ebook because... 
I told Jess this. This is <laughs> slightly embarrassing. I, if I get really anxious in a book, like if you don't know what's going to happen and there's like constant life and death, I have to physically read. I can't listen to the audio. I get too nervous. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I love it. <laughs> And yeah. I did look, and I think it says Teddy Hamilton is featured. So he does, he does the last, last chapter. Last chapter. Yeah. Last chapter. <laughs> How do you yes, pronounce his name? Is it Zayden? Yes. Is that how the audiobook? Zayden. Okay. Because I read it physically and I was like, yeah. I think this is how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. oh, such a good book. I know. So good. What about you guys? Well, Jess is reading Fourth Wing, but what are you reading now, Tori? Because you already oh. finished Fourth Wing. Oh, uh, what is the, uh, undulate? Is that the word? <laughs> the one nobody can say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the word. By spicy. Yeah. Yes, very spicy. Ooh. Yeah. It it's a like single, that. It have to single, be. single dad and his wife like just passed away like in the last two or three years. Ooh, so angsty too. Yeah. I'm liking it so far. I'm only like 10% in though. Yay. I love that. Every time someone says that title, though, they're like, I think that's how you say it. Because how often do you use that word? That's very <laughs> true. <laughs> it's because it's, it's for their, our friends are doing a read along. And that is not one of the books for, for it. Yeah. Oh, the first book in the series, Unfurl, is part of their read along. Oh, but I can then they're read in the series. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, there are box sets of the... Sutter Lake and the Wrecked series. Yeah, the first three books in both of those series have audio box sets. If you're a box set lover, um, both small town, all my series are small town. The only one that isn't small town is Further to Fall, that first book. Um, so, yeah. Lots I think that's why I haven't read the fourth and fifth book of the Wrecked series and yeah. the <laughs> Broken series because I listened to the box set of the first three. Yeah. <laughs> I have my most recent release is uh, Echoes of You is Only One Bed and as someone said which I didn't even think about they're like it's literally Only One Bed the whole book like they're the way they're you know childhood friends to lovers and she used to like escape her kind of bad home life and sneak and stay with him and it's just like a really that's like one of my favorite prologues honestly it's not as like horrific as some of my others mm -hmm. but it is it's it's got the feels at least for me I loved writing it I love your prologues oh, thank you they hate I different really, ways. yes yes I saw I was just scrolling through Instagram was it last night you know like you're in bed and you're just like uh -huh. tapping through people's stories and this girl was like I just started the prologue of whispers of you and she literally had tears she didn't tag you or anything but she had tears I wish she would have tagged me <laughs> I saw that story and I was like oh I feel you oh yeah I feel you. <laughs> and it's funny because like sometimes like writing like like classic writing would tell you like don't do a prologue like reveal things over time or whatever but I just feel like it helps me get into the character's headspace like I know immediately what has caused them like the worst trauma in their life basically <laughs> and it's just it hooks like I like to hook people from the beginning of like okay this happened now what kind of thing yeah I think that's one thing that keeps me like going especially like sometimes you can pick up a book and it's like prologue or chapter one and it's like okay cool I get where the story's going I'm gonna put it down for you know a little bit and then I'll come back to it and it's like the mm -hmm. one you pick up while you're you know going to bed over like a couple of nights or something like that but there's something about it when you grip me with prologue like I still the Shattered Sea prologue will probably be one of my all-time favorites because like the emotional damage but like quite just, a bit it grabs you and you're like well I can't stop now I have to figure out what happened got it. I gotta know what's going on yes. there are some people who cussed me out a little bit for that prologue <laughs> my god you know love yeah definitely. it's your brand emotional damage there we go emotional damage with some serial killers too has your favorite suspense plotline ooh okay I like this question like um I would say can I answer each series I'm gonna sure. I'm gonna jump around so reckless refuge for a wrecked series that's like 
it's the most suspenseful. It's like just a really fun suspense plotline. Like if you like criminal minds kind of stuff, like you'll like that book or that suspense in that book, you know? Um, I would say in Tattered and Torn, it was either Fractured Sky or Shattered Sea. Shattered Sea was just a really fun twist for me to write. I really liked that twist. But um, Fractured Sky has like a WTF moment that you're like, what? <laughs> and that was really fun. <laughs> um, and I liked bringing all of that stuff full circle from that series in that book. Um, and then with Sutter Lake, I'm trying to think. It probably was Beautifully Broken Control, um, which is like a billionaire romance. It was really fun for me to write because they're kind of at odds. She is very like against wealth because some things that happened to her early in life. And he is like, Mr. Billionaire. Um, it actually, it's funny when you think about um, like all the ways you get ideas for a book. I had reread um, Fifty Shades of Grey and I was like, what would happen if like you had a billionaire, but somebody really like hated his wealth? <laughs> and like, I just really wanted to write that book, but the suspense in it was just fun. Um, it kind of ties into that animosity. And then in Lost and Found, I don't think I can say yet. I'm gonna tease us again. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta wait. I feel like that might that might that might reveal my like favorite twist. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll we'll come back after the series is done and I'll <laughs> I'll spill all the tea. <laughs> but the suspense in both of these is still really good though. So Thank you. Thank you. It was like book one, especially was really fun for me to think about how that would play out over this course of time. You know, I, mm -hmm. I really like that. Okay. We are at an hour already. These always go by so, so quickly. Um, we will end with this question again. Cause I know not everybody was around when we first started. So yeah. if you want to explain again, if you have yeah. not yet picked up Catherine, yeah. she's yeah. on Kindle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All the Kindle Unlimited binging um, is now upon us. And I would personally recommend starting with either Whispers of You, which is Second Chance, Childhood Friends to Lovers. Uh, we've got like a security hero, very damaged, very tortured, <laughs> um, small town, forced proximity. And then the other option would be Tattered Stars, which is the first book in Tattered and Torn. And that is like enemies to lovers slash hate to love. And he is a sheriff. It also has a little bit of force proximity, small town. Got some fun animal side characters in that one too. And an animal does get hurt, but they're fine. So, <laughs> so <bad. laughs> they're yeah. fine. I'll be honest, I will never ever be able to like, I can't, I can't kill an animal that we know, like, no, uh-uh, that's, that's a hard pass. No, no. Ro would never forgive me. <laughs> he like looked at you like, what? <laughs> He's like, what's happening? <laughs> oh my gosh, love it. All right. Well, that's oh, it. Um, Catherine's Thank Instagram is so much for having me. You guys are the best. Of course. Thank you for joining. We always love chatting. We love yes. having Rose. It's cute little Hi. nose poking it. You want to say bye, Ro? Bye, bye. Bye, oh, bye. bye. She's so cute. <laughs> okay. We'll see everybody later. Goodbye. Bye, guys.